Uh, welcome to the Red School House at the Red Mill. And uh, my name is Marilyn, and I'd like to welcome you today. Um, do we want to start with a question? Uh, what time period was the uh, schoolhouse built in? Actually, the schoolhouse, the original schoolhouse for Huntington County, was built in 1734, and it was a log cabin. What you see today was actually the schoolhouse that was in Huntington County in Alexandria Township. Um, at one point, it became so run down, people didn't really want to spend money repairing it. And it looked like this. If you can want to come in a closer, take a peek. Um, this has a sign on it that says, we're on our way to the Clinton Museum. So you can see that that building really needed a lot of work. And they brought it here to the, to the, the site at uh, the Red Mill and uh, renovated the building. So at the time, it was all the children came from within a mile or two of the schoolhouse. And they walked to school in the morning, probably they probably had to be at school at nine o'clock in the morning and they went till four o'clock in the afternoon, which was a long day. They would bring their lunch and they'd have already done their chores because most of the kids, well, all of the kids lived on farms and they had to, they each had chores that they had to do before they came to school. So um, you can see that there were many, many children that came into the schoolhouse. And this is a picture of one of the years when it was, uh, actually in Alexandria. And um, you can see that, do, they, do you think they look happy going to school? Anybody? Probably not as happy as you kids. But part of the reason was because when they took photographs of the, at that time, they had to stand still for a very long time and pose. And then it's easier to sit there like, like this than mm, like that. So same thing with this particular uh, picture. So let's go into the schoolhouse and uh, what I want you to do is to line up by the stairs, boys on one side, girls on the other, and after that point, I'm going to turn into Jekyll and Hyde. I will no longer be a really nice person. I'm going to be as strict as the teachers back then were. All right, we had a lot of children. We had to have law and order. So let's go over to the steps. All right, good morning, children. Uh, let's have the girls on this side and the boys on that side. Stand at the bottom of the stairs. I am going to go in and ring the bell. When you hear the bell, you may come into the schoolhouse quietly. There's no more talking unless I speak to you. I am the only one that's talking from now on. Okay? So hold on. students would bring their own lunch from home and you would have a lunch pail something like this and you'd bring it to the schoolhouse and we would store it on one side. Uh, the types of things that children would bring at that time would have been um, no takeout of course they would have had maybe a piece of bread, maybe a piece of fruit, an apple, a um, piece of cow tongue, something really delicious that they would enjoy bringing or what the, whatever the family at home produced because all of the food that they had they would um, have to be self-reliant and they made all the food themselves. So um, the beverages that they could bring would have been beer, watered down beer, water, or cider. Now does anyone have a question about any one of those things? Yes. Where would we get our drinks from? You, you'd get your drinks, you'd get your water, your water would come from the pump that you might have seen outside. And if you were a very good student, I would allow you to go outside and get the water from the well and put it in this, bring it into the children, and everybody could have a drink from the cup. Right? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Okay. What do you think about everybody drinking from the same cup? Good idea? Not anymore. <laughs> so that would, that would be your food and your, your lunch would be over there. So you would have to go the whole day with just whatever you brought. You also would have to bring uh, a piece of coal from home. And th that would go in the stove and that would keep the place warm. As you notice, it's a little cooler in here than even outside. And it's actually a fairly warm day today. But um, 
They had no electricity at that time. Uh, they had large windows and all the light came in from the windows and kept the building as light as, as possible. Uh, they did have uh, kerosene lamps. They used kerosene lamps and the teacher would be in charge of controlling the wicks and getting those going. Okay, if you're new to my classroom, I just want, to know, want you all to know that ordinarily, um, when these schools were built with just one room, there were many, many children here. There could be up to 40 children. And they would sit on benches such as this one here on the right, or on the left, a plain bench with no back. And you would have to sit there and be very quiet. And the order and discipline was the, the name of the game. You could not be noisy, you couldn't talk to your friends, you couldn't pull on somebody's hair, you had to be quiet. So I'm going to read you some of the rules and some of the ways that the teacher got your attention and made you behave yourself. So uh, number one was re respect your schoolmaster, obey him or her, and accept punishments. Do not call your classmates names or fight with them. Love and help each other. Never make noises or disturb your neighbors as they work. So that meant you had to be quiet. You had to be quiet during classes and do not talk unless it was absolutely necessary. If you wanted to get the teacher's attention, you could raise your hand. But you don't keep being a pest, you know? <laughs> so, um, and do not leave your seat without permission. No more than one student at a time may go to the washroom, which we will discuss shortly. Bring firewood into the classroom for the stove whenever the teacher tells you to do so. Go quietly in and out of the classroom. If the teacher calls your name after class, your job would be to straighten the benches and tables, sweep the room, dust, and leave everything tidy. Now some of the ways that the teachers got the students to behave themselves was they would hit them on the side of the head. They called boxing your ears. You would you know, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just got hit. Or they would take this little stick here <coughs> and whack you on the back of your hand. And you'd, you'd feel it. You would behave yourself, no talking. Uh, or they had a whip. They could use a whip on you. So one of the ways that the teachers would shame the children would be to um, apply the dunce cap to the child. And what, can I have a volunteer for this? All right, so what they would do would be to put the hat on the student, and uh, what do you think about that? Does that make him look kind of, you know, silly or very, very silly? All right, it's not such a big punishment, is it? Really. So what they would do next would be, uh, would you like to take a seat right over here? So do you think this is a better or worse situation? If, is he going to be more shamed by sitting in the window or just sitting on the, on the dunce stool? What do you think? I think it would be more, you would feel more shameful because the people in the tenant house and your parents possibly could see you. Right. So if his neighbor went by the schoolhouse today and saw him sitting here with a dunce cap on, um, he'd go home, certainly go home and tell your parents that he, I saw your son in the window with the dunce cap on. So what do you think would happen to him when he went home? Somebody would speak up? Yes? Maybe extra chores? Extra chores? Maybe they'd take them out behind the wood pile. Ever heard of that? So that would not be very nice. Thank you for demonstrating. <laughs> Behave yourself now. So another way would be, um, do we have somebody who's nosy here? Oh yes, why don't you come up for a moment? Okay, so this young man is very nosy and I want him to put his nose right there on the board and stay there until I tell him we can stop. Can I have a young lady to come up and I'll show you what other kind of discipline they would use? Come on up here. So I understand you do remember your lessons. Shame. And what they would do to a young lady would be to hook her up and leave her there until I told her to stop. This way she's gonna really learn her lessons. So when the school last was built, uh, the teachers, they had to recruit from, from the neighborhood. And generally they were um, probably not even much older than the oldest student. They learned um, as they went through the school. And it, it was a, a version of actually like homeschooling is today. People learned from their parents and then they came to school and 
the teacher more or less finished them off. But most of the education was done through rote. In other words, you memorized things and then you repeated it back to their class. Most of the teachers were men because uh, if you were a woman and you had a, a boyfriend, you were automatically fired. You could not have uh, be married or actually be a teacher if you had a boyfriend or a husband. <laughs> so do we have any questions about the teachers? Uh, how much did they get paid? Oh, that's a very interesting question. Um, the teachers were not paid very much and that's why they, a lot of times they were only in the schoolhouse for a very limited period of time. But they were paid, it wasn't like a public school system is today, um, it was paid by the parents of the children who went to school. And they would pay them with vegetables, fruit, eggs, maybe some meat or fish or something like that. And a lot of times they lived in the homes of one of their students. So um, cash, they probably were not receiving much cash. But they had a place to live and they had food to eat. Yes? Um, what kind of subjects and lessons would they have? In the classroom, they would have mathematics, which is your addition and subtraction, and they would have writing, which was very important, and reading. They did some geography, a little bit of history. Uh, the reading and writing was very, very important, and mainly they were the most important subjects for the, for the classroom. And they were taught with uh, figures on a sheet of paper or shell, and the students would just trace over them to learn how to write them. Um, paper was very scarce. They did not have paper. They didn't have, they had little chalkboards for learning how to write on the chalkboards, but the younger children were not given chalkboards. They would use the sand table over here. One of the ways that children were taught how to write was to be shown the letters in the sand uh, box over here. It's not really a play toy. It's how you make your letters. So, young lady, would you like to show us how you would write your ABCs in the sandbox? Okay, so if you had a younger sibling come to school with you, you would bring him up or her and teach the letters to that child. All right, thank you very much. So the school day is over and it is time for you children to go home and get to work at your house. Uh, you'll be walking home maybe a mile or two, try to get home before dark and do all your chores when you get home. Thank you for visiting. You might may sit up and walk up by